In this tutorial, we'll learn how to manage and store agent conversation history in a SQL database in Pydentic AI. There are quite a few database options available. For simplicity, I will be using a SQLite database. This is a topic that is not well covered in the documentation. And to be honest, handling message conversation is quite confusing in Pydentic AI. And it took me a while to get a hang of it. So I thought I'd cover it. Before diving into the tutorial, please make sure that you have some experience working with Pydentic AI since managing agent conversation history is considered as an advanced topic. If you're new to Pydentic AI, check out the Getting Started tutorial, which you can find the link in the description below. Otherwise, let's get started. Launch your co-editor and create a blank Python file. I will be sharing two examples, basic and advanced. With the basic example, we will store the message history as a string. Versus in the advanced example, we will store the message history using Pydentic AI's data models. We will start with the basic example. Import the SQLite and Pydentic AI agent class. Next, define a class called SQLiteDB. This class is responsible for managing the database connection and operations. The init method takes an optional parameter DB name, which defaults to conversations DB. If the database file does not exist, SQLite will automatically create it when this class is initialized. To create the table to store conversation histories, create a method called createTable and call the method when initializing a SQLite DB object. The create table method ensures that the table conversation history exists in the database. If the table does not already exist, it will create the table. If we look at the table schema, the ID column is an auto-incrementing primary key that uniquely identifies each message. The session ID column stores the identifier for the conversation, allowing multiple chat sessions to be tracked separately. The user message column stores the text input from the user, while the agent response column stores the AI-generated response. Finally, the timestamp column automatically records the date and time when the message is saved. When a new chat message is received, we need to store both the user's message and the AI's response in the database. Create a method called save message method inserts a new record into the conversation history table. The method takes three parameters. The session ID, which identifies the chat session, the user message, which contains the text entered by the user, and the agent response, which is the response generated by the AI assistant. To allow the chatbot to recall previous messages, create a method called getHistory that retrieves past conversations from the database. Inside this method, first, initialize a cursor to execute SQL queries. Then write a SQL query that selects the user message and agent response columns from the conversation history table, filtering results based on the provided session ID. By including order by timestamp ASC, ensure that messages are retrieved in the order they were originally stored. Finally, return the results as a list of tuples, where each tuple contains a user message and its corresponding AI response. To handle the chat flow, create a function called chat that takes a session ID and a message as inputs. Inside this function, Retrieve the conversation history for the given session by calling the getHistory method. Once the history is retrieved, format it into a structured conversation by joining each user message and AI response into a readable text format. This formatted conversation history will serve as context for the AI, allowing it to generate responses based on previous interactions. To generate a response, pass the formatted conversation history along with the new user message to the AI agent. Use the run sync method of the agent to send the combined input and obtain a response. The AI will process the full conversation, understand the context, 
and generate a reply that aligns with the ongoing discussion. Once the AI generates a response, we need to store it along with the user's message in the database, called the save message method, passing in the session ID, message, and response. This ensures that every interaction is logged in the database, allowing the AI to maintain continuity in future conversations. Finally, return the AI response so it can be displayed to the user. Now that we have set up the database and implemented chat history retrieval, let's test the conversation history retrieval setup. Go ahead, create an instance of SQLite DB and an agent. Then define a session ID to group messages that belong to the same conversation, allowing the chatbot to retrieve the correct history when needed. In the first run, we will use the chat function to send two messages to the AI agent with the user's background info. These messages will be stored in the database for later retrieval. If we examine the SQLite database file, we will see that two records got created for the first two interactions. Assuming we are starting a new chat session and we want to resume the conversation, Use the chat function to send a message with the session ID to continue the conversation. And that covers the basic example. Now let's move on to the advanced example. In the basic implementation, we went over how to store chat history by saving each message as text. However, in some cases, you might need a more flexible structure that allows you to store additional metadata such as timestamps model details, or even message types. If you want to store complete message structures rather than just plain text, we need to change how we store and retrieve messages. In the advanced example, you will learn how to incorporate model requests and model response data models to handle structured messages and use JSON serialization to store entire message lists in the database. To start, Import the required Python packages. If we examine the model message import, you will notice that model message is a generic data type that can be either model request or model response. Similar to the basic example, set up the SQLite DB class. The setup for the table creation is very similar, except for the conversation history table and get history method. Now, instead of saving user and agent message separately, we are now saving the entire conversation as a list in a string. In the basic implementation, we fetched individual text records for each user message and AI response. However, this required multiple database queries and made it difficult to reconstruct full conversations efficiently, especially for versioning. In this improved approach, we will retrieve a single JSON object that contains the entire conversation history for a session. This method allows us to maintain full context while significantly reducing the number of database queries needed to resume a conversation. Now go ahead and create the getHistory method with the same parameter session ID. Inside the method, Define a helper function called parseMessage. This function decodes the JSON string and converts it back into a list of model message objects, preserving the structure of the conversation. If we look at the source code, it decodes the JSON bytes stored in the database into a Python dictionary, then loop through each stored message and convert it to the designated Pydentic AI data object. The par kind field specifies whether the message is a system prompt user message or AI generated text response. Once the pass message function is set up, we need to fetch the stored message history from the database. Execute a SQL query that selects the message list from the conversation history table where the session ID matches the requested session and order the result by timestamp in descending order and retrieves only the most recent conversation history using limit 1. This ensures that 
we always fetch the latest stored conversation for the given session. The fetch all method retrieves the query results and stores them in a list. Each retrieved message is then passed to the pass message function, which converts the raw JSON data back into model message objects. Finally, the returns a list of structured messages, which can be passed to the AI agent for processing. With our database retrieval process complete, we can now pass this structured conversation history to an agent to resume a conversation session. To send a request, create the chat function with message and session ID as parameters. Unlike the basic implementation, where each user message and AI response needed to be retrieved separately, this approach retrieves the entire conversation in a single query. Now that we have everything in place, we can start testing the implementation. The usage is exactly the same as the basic implementation. If we look at the conversation history table, you will notice that the message list value is displayed as numbers. That's because in Pydantic AI, when you use model dump JSON, the records will convert as binary instead of string. That's why in the getHistory method, we need to decode the value first. And to resume a conversation, send a request using the chat function with the session ID included. And that concludes this Pydentic AI how to store a conversation history in a SQL database tutorial. I hope you find the video useful. If there are any Pydentic AI tutorial ideas you have in mind and you would like me to cover, please leave them in the comments below. Also, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding. See you in the next one.